Question four, use integration by parts to find the integral of x plus two to x plus seven to the half dx. So let's make our u equal to x plus two. Obviously that implies that our u dash or du is just one. And then obviously our v dash is 2x plus 7 to the half. So we need to integrate that to find v. So that means that v equals add 1 to the power. Divide by the new power. Times then the differentiation of 2x plus 7, which is 2. That implies that v is simply 1 third. 2x plus 7 to the 3 over 2. So remember, integration by parts means that our integral, u times v, minus integral v u dash. Integral equals u times v, x plus 2, times 1 third of 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves. Minus the integral of v, which is again one third, 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves. And we're times in that by du, which is 1, so then that's just that. So we need to integrate one third 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves. So as an aside, the integral of one third 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves dx equals 1 third add 1 to the power divide by the new power times 2 1 third times that will be 1 fifth 2x plus 7 to the 5 halves which is a fifteenth times 2x plus 7 to the 5 halves. So our integral equals 1 third x plus 2, 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves, minus the answer we just worked out, plus c. So we've got 5x plus 2, 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves, minus 2x plus 7 to the 5 halves, plus c, and that would be over 15. We can take out a common factor of 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves here. So we've got 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves, 5x plus 2 minus, well, we've got 3 halves, so I'm going to just have 2x plus 7 over 1. And you've got plus c, and remember that's all over 15. So that gives us 2x plus 7 to the 3 over 2 times. Let's just do this quickly, 5x minus 2x, so we've got 3x, and we've got 10 minus 7 is 3, plus 3, plus c, over 15. 3 is a common factor here, so we can say that that is 3 times 2x plus 7 to the 3 over 2x plus 1 over 15 plus c, therefore integral equals 2x plus 7 to the 3 halves times x plus 1 over 5 plus c. And we're done. Matrix A is given by this, find the values of k so that the matrix is singular. So remember, if A is singular, then that implies that the determinant of A must equal 0. So we need to work out the determinant of A and then make it equal to 0. So the determinant of A, that just equals 1 times the 
to have an invest matrix. Minus three times the determinant of two, three, k and minus seven. Plus one times the determinant of two, k, k and 18. So if I just equals one times minus seven, k minus 54. Take away three times minus 14. Take away three, k plus 1 times 2 times 18 plus k, take away k squared. So the determinant of a must equal, let's just tidy this one up. You've got minus 7k minus 54 plus 42 plus 9k plus 36 minus k squared. So the determinant of A equals minus K squared plus 2K plus 24. So remember, singular, we've already said, implies that the determinant of A equals 0. So minus K squared plus 2K plus 24 equals 0. That's k squared minus 2k minus 24 equals 0 to make it easier to factorise. We've got k and k, 6 and 4, minus 6 plus 4, and therefore k equals minus 4 or k equals 6, and we're done. The first three terms of a sequence are defined as x plus 5, 3x plus 2, and 5x minus 1, where x are a member of the natural numbers. So the first three terms form the start of an arithmetic sequence. Okay, let's start doing that. So let's say x plus 5 is u1. 3x plus 2 would be u2, our second term, and 5x minus 1 would be u3. Let's check the common difference between each of the terms. So let's do the first two, u2 took away u1, that is 3x plus 2 minus x plus 5, that equals 3x minus x is 2x, 2 take away 5 is minus 3. And then let's check the common difference between the next two terms, u3 minus u2, that gives us 5x minus 1, take away 3x plus 2. That is 2x minus 3. So since it's got the same common difference, that implies u1, u2, u3 form an arithmetic sequence. with a being equal to x plus 5 and d, a common difference, being 2x minus 3. Part b, find a simplified expression for the 15th term of this sequence. So un, remember, equals a times plus n minus 1 d. And we've already know that a equals x plus 5, d is 2x minus 3, and n is the 15th term, so 15. So we get u15 equals x plus 5 plus 15 minus 1 times 2x minus 3. So u15 equals x plus 5 plus 14 2x minus 3, which is x plus 5 plus 28x minus 3 tens of 30, 3 fours is 12, 42. So u15 must equal 29x minus 37. The sum of the first 20 terms of a sequence is 1, 1, 30. Find the value of x. So remember, the sum 
is n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. Okay, so we want to find if we know the sum of the first 20 terms of a sequence. So that's 20 over 2. 2 times a, but remember a is x plus 5. Plus n minus 1, or just 19 times our common difference, which is 2x minus 3. Okay, so that implies we've got 10 on the outside. 2x plus 10 plus 38x minus 57. So that's 10 times 40x minus 47. That's 400x minus 470. And remember that equals 1130. Should have divided by 10 first, but never mind. So we've got 40x minus 47 is 113. That gives us 40x equals a nice round number of 160, which implies that x must be 4. Question 7, the complex number z equals 3 plus i is a root of z squared minus 6z plus a, where a equals 0, where a is a real number. Part a, nice and simple, state the second root of z squared minus 6z plus a equals 0. Well, that is just going to be z equals 3 minus i. In other words, the complex conjugate of our original z. Part B says, hence otherwise find the value of A. So we've got our complex divisors. So we've got Z minus 3 plus I times Z minus 3 minus I. So we can expand our brackets in the normal way. So that gives us Z squared minus Z times 3 minus i minus z times 3 plus i minus 3 plus i 3 minus i it be a plus actually because minus times a minus is a plus so that implies we've got z squared minus 3z plus iz minus 3z again minus iz plus 9 minus 3i plus 3i is nothing minus i squared so that implies that we've got z squared minus 6z these cancel each other plus 9 and then i squared is minus 1 so plus 1 so remember i squared equals minus 1. So that implies we've got z squared minus 6z plus 10. And our original, remember, was z squared minus 6z add a. And therefore, a equals just the number 10. 6c, the expression z squared minus 6z add a is a factor of z cubed minus z squared minus 20z add b, where b is a real number, find the value of b. So since it's a factor, we can just divide. And since it is a factor, the remainder will be zero. So we can just do that. So let's set up our long division. We've got z cubed minus z squared minus 20z plus b divided by z squared minus 6z plus 10, because a is 10, remember, we've just worked that out. So z squared goes into z cubed z times. Times and through by z then we get z cubed minus 6z squared plus 10z. Taken away from each other, that gives us nothing and it gives us 5z squared and we get minus 30z plus our b on the end. So z squared, that's squared sorry. 
5z squared. z squared goes into 5z squared five times. So that gives us 5z squared minus 30z plus 50. Take them away then. That's nothing. That's nothing. And that gives us b take away 50. But remember, z squared minus 6z plus 10 is a factor. So that implies the remainder must equal 0. So that implies b minus 50 equals 0, and therefore b equals 50. And we're done.